young people across Virginia have submitted over 20. And so okay. I think I hope that this is a testament to young people everywhere that right. while we have always been counted out of several conversations, um, mm -hmm. now is a time more than ever to make sure that we're pushing our foot in the door. Um, right. And sometimes they're not gonna they're not gonna make a chair for you. So you have to make a seat at the table for yourself. Um, right. and I think that's really empowering. Malik's first job podcast here to answer any questions that y'all ask financial literacy and resources parents and young people becoming bosses CEOs future leaders entrepreneurs conferences and boardrooms getting sponsors secured if you want generational wealth Brooklyn's own current fill up with information to help Malik's first job podcast Malik's Malik's podcast Brooklyn's own current fill up current current fill up Malik's first job podcast, podcast, pod, podcast, Brooklyn Zone, Kerwin Phillip, Generational Wealth. Well, well. Greetings, greetings, greetings. How you doing? This is Kerwin Phillip again with another episode of Malik's first job podcast, where we speak about leadership, entrepreneurship, and financial literacy for parents and teens. Uh, today, we have another great guest. Uh, this gentleman has been on the podcast before. So we are, wel we are welcome him welcoming him back to the podcast. We have the great, incredible Elijah Lee. Now, if you, for those that don't remember, uh, Elijah is a community, a community activist, public speaker, um, ordained minister, and an advocate for young people. So welcome, help me welcome Elijah back to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me back. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so let the people know what you have you been up to since the last time we spoke. Absolutely. Um, so, besides a bit of a birthday, um, and quite happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Um, right. I, think growth spurt. I think that as I grow older, I'm only finding more and more ways to really grow as an advocate, as well as with my nonprofit here, our voices. Our mission hasn't changed. However, the way we operate as an organization has just quite a bit. Um, okay. Talking to many young people, I have found that when you're deciding how to become an activist, there's this part of you that doesn't know what you want to do yet. There's this part of you that doesn't know how to get involved in you know, the community work. There's this section of, of your soul and of your mind that just has this passion, but doesn't necessarily have a direction for that passion. Right. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, we really decided as an organization that it was absolutely crucial that we have a training. Um, and so with that kind of in mind, we launched our very first kind of advocacy training. Um, okay. And I'm so glad to say that it was a success. I think that as, you know, I grow as a leader, as an organization, we really want to ensure that every single thing that we produce is for young people, by young people. So right. having so many different perspectives there. We heard from parents and from teachers, organizational leaders. We heard from members of the community on how do we best support our young people, especially those that really want to get involved. Um, so that was something that I am super excited about. Great, great, great. So, so what's the age group for the kids that want to participate in that training program? Like what age are you targeting? Absolutely. So we're really targeting... I'm going to be real. So I know our, our age limit is going to be a little low. So we're willing okay. to go as low as eight. Um, and we okay. say because I myself started really, really young. Um, and right. it, it is my opinion that, I, I mean, look at the Metropolitan Business Fair, for example. We see young people here that are eight, nine, ten years old who have right. these amazing, amazing business ideas. We just need a little bit of time sometimes. Um, so I think we're going eight to 18. Um, so we have, okay. a, we have a gap there to help anyone and everyone who's interested in advocacy. Oh, wow. 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 That's that's amazing. That's amazing. So and uh, what does this training entail? Like what areas do you cover within this training? Absolutely. So we cover different things. So the first thing that we cover is really how do you best find your purpose? How do you find okay. that thing that really works for you? So we talk a little bit about how do you reflect upon your life? How do you find times that you felt like you had been wronged? How do you find times that you felt like that you were alone? How do you find times that you felt like the system kind of left you behind? Um, mm -hmm. And how do you pinpoint a problem in this? So if this is the issue of racism or if this is the issue of child abuse or gender discrimination, whatever this is, poverty, um, that's our first goal. And so this training really focuses on that. 
And the second part of it is how do you find an avenue that works for you? Um, okay. So I get the privilege of talking to you specifically to a lot of the young people that are training on. You can lead a march. Here's how you do that. You can start an organization. Here's how you do that. Um, right. Here's how to join an organization. Here's how to have a booth at an event. Here's how to start a business and to fundraise um, and really move it through that way. Um, but then yeah. we also have people that are able to be on the training to talk to our teachers. How do our teachers best support our young people? How do our parents best support our young mm. people? Because we know our young people are nothing without the people in their communities that are feeding into them and lifting them up and giving them the platform to rise upon. And so we right. really wanted to ensure that we were targeting those communities as well. Oh, wow. 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 So it's amazing that you're not just targeting or training the, uh, the young people themselves, but also their support network around them as well, because that's important. Absolutely. Right? You know, advocacy is a community effort. Um, right. Youth advocacy, while young people are the leaders of it, we need our young people. I mean, we need our adults behind us to right. really sort of push us forward. So I think that was something that we were keeping in mind. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, you know, anytime I speak with you, you, you have so much energy and you know, you're so motivated, right? What, what keeps you motivated to keep doing what you're doing, you know, and keep moving forward? I think that something that has really always kept me motivated is recognizing mm -hmm. that there are wins in everything. Um, okay. But to be quite frank with you, just today, we were really focusing on some legislation that would do some amazing things for young people here in Virginia. Um, right. And I'm so happy to say that it passed mm -hmm. subcommittee. Um, okay. And to know that young people had a, a point in drafting this bill, this was not a bill that was only written by adults, but young people had a say in this. So I'm really excited okay. about that. Um, as well as so many other amazing projects. We were able to finish the Children's Hospital of Richmond. We were able to finish the pediatric safe room with that. So thank you so right. much to all of our amazing donors and supporters with that project. Um, but also every day I get the privilege and honor of working with and recognizing young people that are finding their passions um, right. and finding the things that make them happy. So seeing other young people and just watch this fire spread um, of young, empowered youth, youth of right. color that are ready to use their voices for change, young women um, that are ready to use their voices for change, young people that were maybe told they weren't going to do anything in their lives, young people that were told they couldn't do it, now understanding that they are in control of their future. I think that's, right. that's always given me a lot of joy, and I'm seeing that all around me now, and so I'm so excited. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, can you speak to the uh, the legislation that you mentioned earlier that, uh, that got passed? Absolutely. So this specific bill, SB 1300, mm -hmm. um, was a bill that would help us better understand trauma-informed care um, in, okay. our, in our school systems. So this would help our teachers really um, know mm -hmm. when a child is maybe experiencing abuse at home, maybe experiencing neglect. Um and then this bill would also ensure that they have the resources um, to get that child the help they need. Um, okay. So often we see young people falling through the cracks. And so right. this bill adds an extra layer of netting um, to ensure that doesn't happen. And this is right. not the only one. Young people, uh, well, myself as an individual, have been able to submit five pieces of legislation this year. Wow. But young people across Virginia have submitted over 20. And so okay. I think I hope that this is a testament to young people everywhere that right. while we have always been counted out of several conversations, um, mm -hmm. now is a time more than ever to make sure that we're pushing our foot in the door. Um, right. And sometimes they're not gonna they're not gonna make a chair for you. So if you make a seat at the table for yourself, um, right. and I think that's really empowering. Wow! Wow! Now I've seen recently that you've you know kind of as you say you know kind of stuck your foot in the door into like the the, the political arena. You know, I've seen you around a lot of, you know, politicians, you know, I've seen you down at the, at the, uh, the governor's mansion, things of that sort. Um, do you see that as a future for yourself, get into politics? So with, well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You know I think this is where I'm going to play the young card and that I'm <laughs> um, so every single day I'm, I'm figuring it out. However, I think that the mission has always been how do we support young people and ensure that they can do whatever they're passionate about? Um, so I see the work that I do every day as merely right. a way to help pave a path um, right. that come time for young people to really want to get maybe involved in politics. If there's right. a young person out there that wants to submit legislation, we have politicians and legislators that know that, hey, young people have a voice. Young people 
are knowledgeable about the topics that we care about. And young people are passionate about the things we're talking to y'all about. And so you all need to listen to us. Um, right. So if politics is in the future, maybe um, I would definitely enjoy it. However, I know mm -hmm. that we're right now just focused on finding new and innovative ways to, to strengthen young people across the Commonwealth. Great, great, great. Now, I know there's some young people out there, like they think about uh, trying to get legislation passed. It seems like a big, complicated process. Uh, can you speak to, I guess, it's for, for a young person out there that's listening that has an idea, right, that they want to um, try to implement in their community? What steps would they take to present this to like one of their, um, their local uh, political leaders? Absolutely. Um, and I really, really enjoy this question because I think that this, okay. is, this is something I hope all young people um, one day understand. And so this is actually quite simple. So what we start off by doing is just finding a simple idea that you can write into a piece of legislation. So okay. we're going to take a really broad topic like the issue of racism, right? And there's okay. so many different pieces of this, right? However, mm -hmm. we know one thing that's recently come up is heavily on police brutality. Right. right. Um, and how do we continue to bridge connections between law enforcement and the community while ensuring that everyone is being held accountable? Um, so one piece of legislation that we're seeing a lot is implementing trainings for law enforcement officers on how to interact with different members of the community. Um, right. So, for example, say that we had a young person that wants to submit legislation that says that law enforcement officers would go through a certain type of training to tell them how to deal with specifically communities of color. Um, right. Once you have that, write it down on a piece of paper. And then from there, you email, you call, you reach out to your local delegate, your local senator, your local mayor, maybe your city council member. And you can do all this through a Google search. Um, so we are the age of technology. Use technology, use Google, use Safari, use it to your advantage. Um, right. Get So go on those Googles, look up those people, get their phone numbers, get their emails, contact them, and then give them your idea. Um, and initially, they may be hesitant to pass it. They're going to be hesitant to listen to you. But I'm confident that as long as you keep going at it, as long as you persist, as long as you keep calling them and saying, this is a great idea, we need to be in the room where it happens, um, yeah. I'm confident that they will listen to you. Um, and if you ever, again, need any help, any support, feel free to always reach out to myself. Um, and I know that young people are definitely willing to always rally behind each other. Um, right. so as long as one person gets in the room, I think we all kind of get into the room. So we're more than happy to support our fellow peers. Wow, that's great. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, uh, now let's jump into like the, the business fair. Uh, okay. That's coming up uh, March 11th of this year. Um, and this is your third year yes, participating? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I guess uh, what do you enjoy about participating in the business fair every year? Of course. So there are really two things that I enjoy about being in the business fair. Um, the first thing is that it's always an amazing time where myself, as well as other other board members on Hero Voices, can interact with the community. Um, we can have conversations about why we are here. We can really offer our resources and our and our support um, to anyone that is traveling throughout the business fair. However, I think the second most really the most prominent reason why I enjoy going to this fair so much is because I really get the honor of seeing so many amazing young people who have taken their passions and what inspires them. They have put it into some work. Um, I know you, Mr. Phillip, you've been there. You've seen some amazing kids there, some amazing kids who have made some amazing businesses. Um, and so I think that, of course, it's nice to go there, get my sister some jewelry, get us some nice soap, get some lemonade um, on some sometimes hot, sometimes cool days. Um, right. But nonetheless, it's always an amazing time to just get out there, support your community, but more importantly, support young people who are doing some amazing, amazing work. Um, so I know I'm really, really excited. Great, great, great. And I know people, I guess, you know, every time you come out, you get a chance to speak and kind of get the crowd going and you really motivate uh, the other the other young people that are in attendance. because They see the great work that you're doing and they just want to follow suit and just be like, you know, the incredible Elijah that they see up on stage. Thank you. you know, Thank right? you. All right, so, so what's in the future uh, for Elijah Lee? I think that, again, this is one of those questions I know that you and I have discussed several times. Um, and I think my right. answer has always been, 
I don't really know. Um, right. And so I think it's going to say that today too. Um, I think that what I do know is whether it's we're doing another project with the hospital to build um, pediatric safe rooms or whether we're passing more bills or maybe we're incorporating more people and to hear our voices. Um, right. We are planning our March. That's going to be in April. That's going to be the seventh child abuse awareness March. Um, so mark okay. the calendar for April. And then also we are working on another training. We're hoping it, it can be in the summer. So maybe when young people okay. come off of school can be a little flexible. Um, right. And so, but other than those two major things, I think that we're willing to just do whatever we can to support the community around us. Um, so we are willing to feed in resources and invest in our young people because we know at the end of the day, they are our future. Um, and the investments that we make today are going to be some of the best things for our world tomorrow and next week and next month and even decades from now. And so while I can't tell you exactly what's next, I'm excited to say that no matter what, I can promise there's going to be great things. Um, and it's going to especially mean great things for our young people. Right, right, right. And I, and I, and I don't doubt that, uh, you know, you have greatness ahead of you, right? Because you're doing great things now. So I'm sure it'll only get greater, right? So for people that want to get in contact, matter of fact, let's go back to the march. So where's the march taking place? So right now we're still working on all the details and logistics. Have We are hoping that we can secure Monroe Park um, okay. right in the heart of Richmond. I think moving right. it to Richmond is going to be an amazing, amazing thing. However, we're still working on those details. Okay, great, great, great. So for those people that want to, I guess, get in contact with you, stay abreast of you know, the march that you have coming up, uh, other trainings that you have taking place, where can they find you online? Absolutely. So the best place to find me is going to be at IncredibleElijah.com. Um, that is our website that has all my social media, all the March information, everything. Um, you can also find, again, like I said, my Instagram, my Facebook. My Instagram is Elijah underscore for justice underscore Lee. Um, and so that's where I do a lot of my pictures and things like that. And you can also find me at Facebook on Elijah Lee. Um, okay. And if you want to stay with my politics, feel free to follow me on Twitter as well at Elijah Lee um, 07. And so, but yeah, no matter where you can follow me, please don't ever hesitate to reach out um, specifically on the website that also has my email address um, as well as my phone number. And so you can get in contact with me there. Um, and we are always happy to offer any support we can. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So before you wrap up, any closing thoughts that you want to add? And let the, uh, want the people to know? No, I think that I hope all of you will join us at the business fair coming up in March. I know that I'm super excited. Hopefully that mm -hmm. you can take a stop by hear our voices, our booth. Um, but definitely be sure to check out some of the amazing young people. I look forward to seeing all of you there. And thank you again, Mr. Phillip, for this opportunity. It's always an honor and a pleasure to see you. Well, thank you, to, you know, for accepting the invitation. I appreciate you as well. Absolutely. All right, all right great. Thanks. Okay, great, great. So again, thank you all for joining us today for another episode of the Malik's First Job Podcast. Be sure to follow uh, Elijah Lee. He's doing a lot of great things in the community. Um, and he can help, you know, with your, within your community as well, right? So he's not just limited to the Richmond, Virginia area. I'm sure he's willing to help out uh, nationwide, right? Absolutely. Okay, great. Thanks again, and we'll see you all next week. Generation, Generation wealth, wealth, wealth.